Welcome to this tutorial on how to create a moving finger painting as seen in the music video Headed West by Mallory. The first thing you want to do is get your hands on this brush pack by Daniel Martinez Vara in parenthesis Pepe Land. Follow the link in the description and find the download button. Once it's downloaded, extract the folder to a safe, easily accessible place on your PC. This blend file contains all the brushes you will need to complete this tutorial. Create a new 2D animation blender project. In order to add the brushes to this project, go File, Append, and then find the location of the newly downloaded blend file. Select that file and select Brushes. Search for all the brushes beginning with the letters PP. Select all of them and click Append. Now all of the brushes will be available in this drop-down menu in the toolbar in Draw Mode. Playing around with these brushes with Vertex Paint turned on can be fun, but before you jump in it is important to plan your animation first with the standard grease pencil brush. The planning for an animation is called an animatic, and a link to the animatic for Headed West is provided in the description below. Planning is important because it allows you to see the bigger picture of your story without wasting time worrying about the details of painting every frame. So, to begin planning in draw mode, I set the strength of the brush to 100 and I turn off pen pressure. I change the radius of the brush using the F key on the keyboard. I decide to draw a desert scene as I've been playing Red Dead Redemption, so I draw a cactus. To draw straight lines, hold in the shift key. This gives smooth straight lines. I edit the brush in edit mode with proportional editing turned on. To turn on proportional editing, use the O key. I start adding in a horizon at about one third of the way down the canvas, and I make small edits in edit mode. I add a mesa in the middle ground to create more depth. Objects that are further away should be drawn smaller and closer to the horizon line. I start adding some mountains in the distance. All of these different Z levels will be used to create a parallax effect later in the video. I add some bushes and a rock to the foreground, as well as a dead animal carcass in the middle ground. I think it's a back of some kind. Now to begin working on the focal point of the image. I decided to create a horse with a horse rider that rears in the distance to add a little bit of motion to the scene. I proceed to draw the legs, and a tail, and some ears, and a mane, and I start working on the rider with a hat and an arm and a torso. To make the horse rear, I had to get some reference images off the internet, and I added them to my scene in object mode by going add image reference image. I then scale it with the S key, and move it with the G key. In order to animate the horse, I use the grease pencil timeline. I change the frame on the grease pencil timeline to about frame 40, and I begin drawing the rearing pose of the animation. I pay close attention to the reference image, and I exaggerate it slightly to get the desired effect. I want the rider to look as if he is just about to fall off the horse. I continue adding details such as the ears and the mane, and I thicken up the legs a little bit. I notice that the proportions aren't exactly right, so I go into edit mode with proportional editing turned on, and I adjust it until it's the same proportions as the first frame. Before the horse jumps into the air, you need to create an anticipation frame, that is, the horse preparing to jump up. This means that the horse's legs must be bent, and his body should be leaning forward slightly, as well as the rider on the back. The anticipation frame is followed by another short frame where the horse is straightening the legs and the rider is collapsing into the horse, creating the sense of inertia. The anticipation frame of the horse bending its legs and then straightening them gives the effect of the horse thrusting itself into the air. By scrubbing back and forth on the grease pencil timeline, I can continue to make small edits to the animation, such as moving the buttocks of the horse in conjunction with the torso. I duplicate some of the frames to create the second half of the animation, that is, the horse collapsing back down onto the ground. By simply duplicating frames and then moving them around in edit mode, you can quickly create an animation without having to redraw the same things over and over again. I wanted to create a few frames where the rider removes his left hand from the reins and just waves it around a little bit. Perhaps he's 
waving at the camera or gesturing to a fellow traveler, or maybe he's just having a good time, who knows. I then copy the first few frames of the animation and flip them around by pressing S, X, negative 1. I continue to edit the animation to make it look as if the horse sways backwards slightly before collapsing into the ground, cradling himself as he lands. You can use the right and left arrows on the keyboard to bump the animation one frame forward or backwards, and you can use the up and down arrows to jump to the nearest keyframe on the selected grease pencil layer. Navigation, moving and resizing objects is done in exactly the same way in the grease pencil timeline as it's done in the 3D viewport. I now review my animation to see what's missing, and I notice that the motion of the horse collapsing into the ground is a little bit too snappy. The motion of the horse pushing itself off the ground is fast, and therefore snappiness works. But the motion of the horse collapsing into the ground is a little bit slower, and therefore I need to add another frame to slow down the motion. I review the animation again, and I now notice that the motion is too slow, so I remove one frame of the horse swaying, and I adjust the timing of the keyframes accordingly. I now begin the process of separating the objects from each other and arranging them on the z-axis to create real depth. I select some of the points in edit mode, and by pressing Ctrl L, I select all other connected points of that object. I then press G and Y to move the objects along the y-axis, and I press S to resize them. I duplicated the frame and moved it one frame before the frame that I am editing, and enabled onion skins in order to see where the objects should go and how big they should be. I continue the process of moving objects that should be in the distance away from the camera, and vice versa. To create motion, I go into object mode and I set a keyframe by pressing I and selecting scale rotation location. I then create a new panel for timeline. And I change the frame and I create a new keyframe, moving the object along the x-axis. I change the handle type of the first keyframe by selecting it and pressing V and selecting Vector to remove the easing and only have the ease out effect. Now that the planning phase is done, I'm going to begin the painting phase of the project and I'm going to start by creating a new grease pencil layer. I call this new layer background as I'm going to begin by painting the sky and the sun, which makes up the background of the scene. I like to create a new properties panel in order to quickly select the colors for painting and I change the mode to vertex paint. This allows you to paint without having to create extra materials. I change the background color of the scene to a more deserty color and I begin painting the color of the sky, which I decided was a bright yellow color. I'm going for the kind of style that you see in the box art for Red Dead Redemption 2 which has a lot of contrast and a lot of bright reds and yellows. I begin painting a blood red sky and I manage to paint behind the sun on the same layer by enabling the option paint on back in the above tool menu. Just like before, I'm able to edit the existing strokes by going into edit mode and moving them around with proportional editing enabled. I'm also able to change the thickness of each stroke by pressing Alt S on the keyboard. I continue painting the blood red sky, now with a lower opacity to enable background colors to come through. I try an orange color and then quickly decide against it, rather going for a pinkish color moving towards a darker blue in the sky. I then paint over the light colors using the dark blue to blend the colors more smoothly into each other, creating a sort of dappled gradient effect. I then start adding clouds by drawing the silver linings that will be facing the sun and catching the light in a nice bright yellow color, the same color as the sun. I then start adding some shadows, starting with some red and then finally some blue, a little darker and desaturated to the blue in the sky. I'll select an earthier color and I start painting in the mountains. I move the planning layer above the background layer just so that I can see where the mountains should go according to the planning that I did previously. 
I start adding in some lighter earth colors just to create some depth and to make it look as if the mountains are catching the sun. I then select a darker earth color and begin adding in shadows on the opposite side of the mountain to create a little bit more depth and then I decide that's enough work and I start drawing the cactus. I realized that I was drawing the background in the wrong place so I select all those strokes and I move them to the right place. In order to avoid this mistake in the future, in draw mode I make it so that I draw where the 3D cursor is by selecting this option and then I select some points of the cactus and I press shift S and select move cursor to selected in order to start drawing on the plane where the cactus should be. I give the cactus some depth using the same methods as before, making the areas towards the sun lighter and adding some shadows on the opposite side. I then add some red to the flower of the cactus and this is where the brush pack by Daniel Martinez really shines through as I start using the leaf brush to create these little shrubs. The colors of the leaves randomize around the selected color, so it's important to choose the color carefully as it is possible to have some unwanted results. For these bones, I decide to use a wet oil brush instead of the sketchy brush, just to make the bones stand out a little better against the environment of the desert. Using a low opacity black sketch brush, I start sketching some shadows that stretch out in a direction opposite the sun. Then using a high opacity sketch brush, I just start painting in some shadows on this rock and then switch to a lighter color to shade in the lighter areas. And finally, I switch to a grass brush and using a light orange color start sketching in some long dry grass behind the rock arrangement. This grass brush is a great way to quickly and easily add grass to your scene. I find using long slow brush strokes with a nice thick brush gets the best results. I then just clean up the grass brush strokes and uh, delete some of the unwanted ones and um, move the strokes in front along the y-axis so that they are in front. Then I select these shadows with Control L and I move into the side view and using the shear tool, I shear the shadows so that they lie on the ground plane in three-dimensional space. Now you see as I move from left to right, uh, the shadows move realistically and uh, now I just take some time to separate these strokes onto a new layer uh, and I do that by pressing M and selecting new layer. Notice that the shadows are a little bit skew uh, towards the sun so I just take some time to share them from the front view just so that they more accurately uh, line up with the position of the sun. Uh, so I just select those with the box tool and press Control L and then use the shear tool again to move them into place. I then decide that I want to create the same 3D effect with the sky. So I begin the process by selecting the strokes of the sky and I press Control L. And then I select the shear tool, move into the side view and then I just begin sharing it. And then in the front view, I resize it using S and Z, and I move it using the G tool, and I just make sure that it's positioned correctly. And now as you see, when I move, you can see it has a sort of 3D effect. I grab the frame I've been painting on and move it into position 1. The position is looking good, and now I just want to finish it off by painting this final mesa. I select a nice earthy color and I move the 3D cursor into position by selecting a stroke and pressing Shift S, move cursor to select it. With the cursor in place we can begin painting the mesa. 
I begin just filling in the base color and then I select a lighter color to paint the side of the mesa facing the sun and then I select a dark color to fill in the shadows. I then use that same color to fill in some ground shadows in a direction opposite the sun and then I decide that I want to go a little bit darker so I select a darker color and create some dark crevices with a high opacity brush on that mesa. I notice an issue with the sky going over the sun so I select the sky and I go stroke arrange center back. I have those uh, set to shortcuts. I like to use the square brackets and shift square bracket to center back or center front. I'm moving that shrub into the correct 3D position and resizing the thickness on some grass brush strokes. And now I want to create a ground layer, so I create a new layer and I name it ground and I select a color a little bit darker than the ground color and I start painting in some horizontal lines to represent valleys and hills in the surface of the ground. Before I do that I decide I want to move this animal carcass onto the correct layer, being the middle ground layer, same layer as the mesa, and I enable the ground layer again and I just start painting that in, just filling in shadows where I think there might be shadows, and uh, creating a little bit of a more defined horizon line, and just filling in the scenes. I want to create light where you would see reflections from the sun, that being the ground directly in front of the sun. Now I select the middle ground layer because I want to create some grass just hiding the division of the object and the ground plane with a little bit of grass. This is a mistake I often make just uh, drawing on the wrong plane in the y-axis. So I just correct that by selecting the strokes and then moving them into the correct position. And uh, now I just add a few green blades of grass to the existing grass strokes. And I decide I also want to add a little cactus in the middle ground layer. So I select a sketch brush and I set the opacity to 100 and I just start sketching in the shape of another cactus with highlights and shadows before and a flower on top. And I just continue filling in more grass of different shades just to create some variation in the color of the grass on the ground and just filling it in over the mesa, just selecting the mesa there to move the 3D cursor into place. And just generally finishing up the ground layer and now I select a lighter color close to the color of the sun and I start creating those reflections I was talking about earlier, just uh, creating a very yellow desert on top of that dark brown. I realize that the camera movement is going to expose the section where I haven't got any mountains so I just select the background layer and move my 3D cursor into place and just paint in some mountains. Now I notice that the outline for the cactus is on the same layer as the paint, so to separate them I go into the materials panel and I lock all the other brush strokes except for the one that I did the planning in, and I select those brush strokes and I delete them. So now I start moving all the brush strokes on the ground layer onto the same plane as I made a mistake and didn't draw them on the same plane, but it's okay because I can just resize them and move them into the right place. And now I want to shear the ground as I sheared the sky and the shadows earlier in the same way to create this 3D effect. And uh, when you shear it like that, you'll notice that it, the sizes aren't the same from the camera view. So I select the back of the ground plane and I s change the proportional editing to linear and then I resize it on the x-axis and I just move it to the left slightly to accommodate the camera movement and there you go. 
Now that I've removed the outlines from the planning layer, I noticed some mistakes in the shading, so I just select the sketch brush with a low opacity and I just start painting over some of the inconsistencies that I notice. You can be far more careful, I've just made this for tutorial purposes. I change to a wet oil brush and I choose a white color just to add some spikes to the cactus. So now that the scene is uh, looking good enough, I want to focus on the animation. So um, the trick to get it looking like an animation, like a stop motion animation, is to add this noise modifier and just to adjust it so that the influence is not too strong. And you can just fiddle with these settings until you get something that is to your liking. And the default setup is to create a noise effect every four frames. The noise modifier moves the strokes around every fourth frame, so I'm just correcting some of the effects of that here. And now as I play the animation you can see it just is every fourth frame. Now I want the animation to line up with this jittering, just to maintain that illusion of a painted stop motion movie. So here I am just grabbing those keyframes and moving them to line up with that noise modifier. Moving the keyframes around is going to change the timing of the animation, but uh, because we have quite a lot of space to deal with, it's not going to change it that much, but I'm just here adjusting the timing just to make the animation look a little bit more believable. In Mallory's music video, Headed West, I used a lot of frame interpolation. And I wanted to find an example to show you how to use it too. And I decided on a bird, which would be quite an easy example to use. So selecting a white paint, I started drawing a bird shape in the sky in the way that a child would. This is a finger painting, after all. I start by planning out the timing of the animation, so I look for a place where the noise modifier makes the paint jitter, and then I select the brush stroke using a proportional editing with a needle fall off, and I pull the wings up to a starting position. This is where we're going to interpolate the frames to. To interpolate between the two frames, select a frame in between and select the layer. Then go interpolate and select the desired easing. I am choosing a sinusoidal easing with an ease out because the wings are going up. You can also press Ctrl Shift E. This will result in a lot of little blue keyframes in between the two keyframes. As I play it you can see the resulting effect. Now I'm going to look for another frame in which to create another keyframe. So I scrub through until I see a little jitter and then I start moving the wings into position. Proportional editing can be very useful, and I use a variety of different falloffs in order to get the desired effect. Continue creating new keyframes and interpolating between them, selecting the appropriate easing where necessary and smoothing them to fix all my little errors. In order to maintain that stop motion effect I was talking about earlier, I select every frame in between every fourth frame and delete it. Now to complete the loop, I copy the first frame to the end and I interpolate between them using an ease in because the beginning starts with an ease out and I'm completing the motion of the wings moving from the bottom to the top. Now I delete the extraneous frames and I play back the animation to see how it looks. I copy all of the frames and I put them at the end to see how it looks when it's looped and I decide it looks okay, except when the wings come together, it needs to hang for an extra frame. I want the bird to move up and down with the flapping motion, so I turn on multi-frame edit, and I select the frames where I want the motion to occur, and deselect the frames where I don't want the motion to occur, and I go to the middle of the movement, the height of the movement, and I set multi-frame mode to have a fall off, and then I move the bird down, and I switch it to object mode with multi-frame off, and you can see the bird moves up and down. I add a time offset modifier in order to loop the frames, and I select the bird layer, 
and I select the frame range that I desire and I play back the animation to see how it looks and then I adjust the frame offset accordingly. I notice that I, I have one extra frame so I play it again until I get it right and there you see it's looking pretty good. So now that the flapping motion is established I want to move this bird to the correct location. At the moment it's in line with the cactus so I turn multi-frame on and I turn multi-frame fall off, off and I select all on that layer and I move it back and I size it and turn the stroke thickness up with Alt S. In order to correct the smooth motion of the camera to match the jittered motion of the paint, go into the graph editor, select a point, press N and open up the modifiers panel and add a step modifier with an offset of 4. Using the clipboard button, you can copy this modifier to as many attributes as you want. In this case, I only need to apply it to the X location as the camera or the object only moves along the X axis. Check the animation to see if the motions match, and they do. So I go back into the dope sheet and to the grease pencil timeline to finish this animation of the horse. I want to use a form of interpolation that does not generate all of the frames, but only generates one frame. You can use this by pressing Ctrl E and then typing in the percentage that you want or by moving the mouse. I use this to animate the hand. Now that our animation is complete, we can start thinking about render settings. You can leave all the render settings as is, as Eevee will be fine. All you need to change are the output settings. First, think of a name for your file and find an appropriate place to save it. Secondly, you want to change the file format to FFmpeg and change the container to an mpeg4. Lastly, set the audio to ACC if you have any audio in your file, and then render the animation. This is what the final animation looks like. Thank you very much for watching, and congratulations if you got this far. If you enjoyed this video, check out some of what I'm working on currently and subscribe if you want to see what this is going to end up being. I'm not really sure where I'm going with this, but uh, check out some of my other videos and consider donating to my Patreon. Link is in the description.